who is ready for the Bug Forest? Viridian Forest is where we're headed next. It contains a lot of bug Pokemon, by which I mean like four of them. And it'll have our first real trainer battles. We fought our rival, of course. But up until this point, it's just been our rival and wild Pokemon. Now we get to fight actual trainers. They almost exclusively, or maybe even exclusively, have bug Pokemon. Again, if our Pidgey had a flying attack, it would be very useful here. It, however, does not have a flying attack. Since I feel incredibly betrayed by Gust. That's just a normal type attack. Oh well. I don't even know if you can catch Weedle in this forest in yellow. We'll find out. I know you can catch Caterpies. And uh, Caterpie evolves into Metapod. I'm going to catch the Caterpie. Evolve it to Metapod. That's how we're going to get our Metapod. Uh, there's not much point in catching a Metapod just in the wild because the only attack it'll have is Harden. And Harden does no damage. So if you want to train the Metapod, it's not easy. As opposed to if you catch the Caterpie, it'll no tackle. So even when it evolves to the Metapod, it'll still no tackle. You gotta be able to do some damage. It's a good thing I said almost exclusively, because uh, Nidoran is not a bug, it's a poison type. And for some reason we just missed with Thundershock. It's unfortunate. Considering I'm pretty sure it has 100 accuracy. In this gen, there was like still a 1 in... 255 chance, I think, of missing with a 100 accuracy attack. These games are not programmed the best. I mean, they did what they could at the time. But, gosh, they're broken. It's really funny, actually, how broken they are. I don't know if yellow's as bad, but red and blue, you can exploit them very easily. Uh, you'll see the Pikachu just learned a new attack. It's called Thunder Wave. It, if it hits, is a guaranteed paralysis. That means that the, attacking, the, the opposing Pokémon may not be able to attack, and also they're now slow. Which gives us a decided advantage. Also, critical hits. I don't remember what the percentage is of a critical hit, what uh, the chances that it happens, but it basically multiplies your damage by 1.5. I think it's still 1.5 in this gen. Just, it makes your attack better. So that's very handy. See if we can catch a Caterpie here. Oh, there are Pidgey in this forest too. We should have just waited to catch a Pidgey. I mean, that Pidgey is. Phew, that Pidgey's level 8. That is tied with Pikachu for the strongest Pokemon that we would have if we caught it. And that's a decent amount of damage. We may. We may have to exit the forest. We may have to go back to the Poké Center. I don't really want to do a whole bunch of backtracking because I think that's just boring, so I may have to just speed that up if I wind up doing it a bunch. Yeah, let's just keep going for now. See what there is. We do have a potion, I think, right now. It's just one. Maybe I'll just buy some potions and use those instead. I typically don't spend a ton of money on potions because when I'm playing alone, I, I don't mind the backtracking. Maybe I'll just speed it up. That may just be easier. Easier for everyone, anyway. If I keep doing it a bunch. We'll leave this one in. It's not very far. Some of them are not close to the Poké Center. Plus, you're not used to it yet. But, basically... When, uh, when your Pokémon start to get hurt, you don't want them to faint, especially Pikachu, because uh, Pikachu gets mad at you. You can uh, turn around and talk to it, and it'll show you its emotions, and it'll get mad, mad at you if you let it faint a bunch. So, we're going to try to avoid that, since we want a happy Pikachu. But it's, this is, it's not a long dungeon, but it, this early on, when you don't really have good Pokémon, you don't have much type coverage, it's, it's a little bit of a grueling test. You can be expected to, to come back and heal at least once, if not a couple times. And man, that, that, 
I still can't believe there's a level 8 Pidgey in there. I thought those Pokemon were, like, capped at 6, maybe 7. But apparently not. You learn something new every day. What I should have done is just catch that Pidgey and just release our current Pidgey. That's four levels of gain, like, right off the bat there. Oh well. Should carry extras. We don't have a lot of money right now, though, because we haven't fought many trainer battles, and that's how you get money in this game, along with selling junk. So we can't get many more Pokeballs. We only need to catch one, maybe two Pokemon in this forest, though. So it's not going to be too bad. I really wish Pidgey had a flying attack. A uh, string shot lowers your speed by one level. It's not a big concern here. Pikachu is significantly faster, so it would take a couple of string shots to actually make Pikachu slower, and then we could always use uh, Thunder Wave if we needed to. Let's see. Let's see if our level 4 Pidgey can take out a level 7 Caterpie, even with Gust. Okay, so he's only doing 4 damage in attack. We're doing less. Okay, we can take two more hits. The Caterpie can take probably four. It might die in four. Ooh. Okay, let's just hope it keeps missing with String Shot. That, that works in our favor. Oh, a critical hit. That's really, really helpful. Even if it hits with String Shot, that's fine too. We're already slower. It literally makes no impact, so it's just another critical hit. That's really lucky. Okay, this is very good for our Pidgey, and saves us some Pikachu hits. Which means Pikachu we can use more later on in the forest. This will help train our Pidgey. It now learns Sand Attack. Uh, not the most useful for us, what we're doing, uh, because it, it's easier to just attack when you're f fighting computers. But... It's better than just having Gust, I guess. I mean, more options. It's hard to say no to more options. And I'm going to try to catch this Caterpie. So let's weaken it with something else. Because I, I think Pikachu might kill it. It's only level 3, we're level 9. That's a big difference. So if we can just weaken it with, you know, a couple of scratches... Yep, yeah, it should be able to take one more unless we crit, which, as I say it, means it might happen. It, it certainly feels that way. Confirmation bias, of course. It has no actual impact. Now we can throw our Pokeball, and unless we find a Weedle, and I'm not 100% sure you can get them in yellow, or they may just be a rare spawn. That's really all we need here. So, we're still good on Pokeballs. We'll just continue through. We're, we're doing okay for health. I mean, we're not very far, but that's okay. Uh, we can even start running if we really need to. And we want to conserve our strength. Oh, that was good. It didn't help us, but it had the chance to help us. That's always nice. Uh, we're going to be coming up on another trainer fight here. It, it is avoidable. We could have gone around the right side. But I'm not going to try to avoid too many trainer fights. Not that you really need them. I'm gonna do some grinding off screen too. I, I don't wanna make you watch grinding. It's just boring. It's just fighting wild Pokemon over and over again. But it'll make my job easier when I'm doing the grinding. If we fight the trainers. Nidoran should be able to kill this Metapod if in two attacks, probably. Yeah. Even if even if it hardens. So this is just me trying to get other Pokemon experience. Uh, start to get them leveled up a little bit. Again, making my, my grinding that I have to do easier. I'm selfish. But this is also how you should play the game. Like, I want to leave... I'm not going to leave the grinding in, obviously. That's just dumb. But I'm going to play it how I would play it. It doesn't make sense to... I mean, you can go through the game with just your starter, 
And people have done it with worse things. I know people have hacked in a magic carp, famously the most useless Pokemon, and beaten the entire game with just a magic carp. Um, there was a popular phrase mm, several years ago. I don't know if it still is, but it was anything works in game, which is if someone asked a question about non competitive battling, aka in game battles, uh, the response would be an automatic anything works in game because it does. Uh, these games are for children. They're very easy. Uh, they, they, there's some complexity to the mechanics, absolutely, but the core story of it is is very easy. The core mechanics are simple enough. Let's see if there's anything over here. Sometimes they place random items out of the way. So yeah, you can beat the game with anything. I'm gonna try to play it better than that. Try to play it properly. I think there's only like two more trainers in this forest. So we're getting pretty pretty okay. There's a lot of repetition you'll see. We're fighting mostly the same Pokemon so far. And that's true of a good chunk of the game. The trainers in every area have similar Pokemon, typically. Um, they're not always the same type, which is what you've seen here. You've seen I mean, Caterpie and Metapod, they're both bug types. The gym leaders uh, are themed by type, so the first gym is rock and ground. I mean, it's technically a rock gym, but a lot of the rock Pokémon also have ground. Uh, Geodude especially, and Onix, which are, I believe, the two gym leaders Pokémon. So, there you have it. Which, uh, you can use uh, thunder attacks, electric attacks, on rock-type Pokémon, but if they're part ground or fully ground, uh, it'll have no effect. I know the anime plays a little loose and fast with those rules, but the games do not. So Pikachu becomes virtually useless. That's why we're getting the Mankey trained up, that's why we're getting the Nidoran trained up as well. There may actually only be one trainer left. Get another Caterpie here. Pikachu's got a lot of health for this far into the forest. Which I'm very happy about. It's now strong enough to one-shot the level 3 Caterpies. Maybe not the level 4s. Oh, there's level 5 Caterpies too. We should have waited. We should have caught this one. Paralyze it, see what happens. String shot doesn't bother us, that's fine. This probably won't kill it. And it did not. That looks like we might actually be able to kill the level fours. But the reason I paralyzed it there is just you know, we can we can send out someone else. Have a safer switch in. There's a chance the Caterpie couldn't have attacked. It did, but it didn't use an attack that matters. And now we can kill it pretty easily. Uh, the way that works is the two Pokemon that participated, or if there's more than two, then all of them, will split the total amount of experience that was available. So if a Pokemon gives 20 experience, you have two Pokemon that fight in that battle, you each get 10. Pretty simple. Uh, here's another Pidgey that'll probably get one-shotted by Thundershock. Uh, if you've never played one of these games before, you may have noticed there's a number that shows up. Also, there's a hidden item right in front of this guy. I just remembered that. Uh, I don't remember where many of the hidden items are. I remember one more, really, that's kind of... you wouldn't expect. I don't remember exactly where it is, though. I just remember a general area. Um, but each, each amount of moves can only be used a certain amount of times. So, for instance, the 14 out of 30 there for Thundershock was you have 14 out of 30 attacks left. Now it's 13. Uh, that, there are items that'll restore that, or it gets restored at a Pokemon Center. If a Pokemon runs out of usable moves, it uses Struggle, which does damage to you as well. It is not a good move, you don't want to use it. But 
sometimes you have no other option. Again, I wish Pidgey here had a flying type attack, but it should be able to kill. Yeah, that's, that's why we paralyzed. It's slower means we get the two attacks, and there we go. Pidgey leveled up. I don't think it, it... It should get Quick Attack pretty soon, which is just a better version of Gust. It has priority. And I think it has five more attack power in this game. I think Gust is pretty weak. Let's see if these guys are going to give us anything. Uh, that guy was talking about an HM move called Cut which you need in order to progress through certain gates in the game, like that tree that looks different from the boulders below there. Uh, you can cut that down. It opens up shortcuts, or uh, just opens up places you have to go. Some, some places you just have to cut down. We won't get that for a while. And we are now in Pewter City. This is home to the first gym leader. And that's pretty cool. So, uh... We're progressing through this video game. That's all for this time, though, so I will see you guys on the next episode.